A common question that you ask me is, how do you select a motor, a gearbox, an actuator, or all the other items that make up a motion controller or a robot controller? And this is where I think that YRG does the best job in the industry. So today I have Chris Elston with YRG to talk us through how do we select our motion control and robot components? Okay, so I think you hit the nail on the head with all the things that you said, Tim, and that was um, selecting the motor, the gearbox, and the mechanical system. That's the old school way of doing it. And if you remember, um, every you know you had different manufacturers, and really no one knows what the limits of other pieces are. So like you have a motor, but you don't know the mechanical limits of this. So when you uh, you know buy a product like a Yamaha um, Trans Servo. It's sized as a whole complete unit. Mm -hmm. And really when you think of it as a whole unit, being that that already the homework's been done with this, all we really need is some very basic parameters. We need how far do you want to go, right? right? How fast do you want to get there? And what is your payload? With those three questions, we can size up any motion application. Get them these three items and they'll spit out a whole part number. When I say a whole part number, it's not just this actuator, it's not just the motor. It's also the servo drive that is going to control it. It's the motor cables. It's the whole works. You're really applying power to it, and you're ready. And that's the same way with the Scara, too. A Scara operates on the same principles. You you have some object that you want to do work, and it, has, it's, it weighs a certain amount. And then you have so many products that you need to make. Like, how many widgets do I need to make a minute? And that's how fast you want to go. And then where do you need to pick up that object and place it? That's the distance. Which brings us into setting up your motor parameters, which is really so simple, but I thought that we needed to go ahead and go through it on the robot. So yeah, one of the things that I really appreciated coming from the PLC motion world when I started working for Yamaha is I really like the fact that payload is the highest parameter and and how Yamaha calculates motion. And really, if you think about that, that makes sense because... Yeah, I don't I don't really want to calculate excels, D excels, jerks and and those types of things. So if we just declare the payload in the controller, the controller already takes care of the tuning. There's no tuning that's required. It automatically scales down the excels and D excels and jerk settings that you would traditionally set and say like a traditional servo motor. Those are all done automatically behind the scenes. One of the primary reasons why the the setting for the Yamaha is in payload is that's how Yamaha guarantees warranty and life of their product. Because if you set the payload properly on there, it essentially is protecting the mechanical abilities of the motor, the gearbox, the ball screw in here. Yeah, and that's a guarantee from Yamaha that says, hey, if, if you're running this at 2 kg, then it's going to derate um, the motor, the gearbox and everything to be able to run it to the life, the promised life of the product. All right, show me how to set it. Sure. Now, if you're just jumping into the series with this video, in the previous one, we already configured our controller in RCX Studio, and we're going to pick up right there. So I think you're going to be pretty happy with how easy this is, Tim, to set the, the payload parameter in a Scara robot. And where we're going to go is over here to the window tree area and find parameters. And uh, where the payload setting is at is under robot. Double click that. And you'll see that it's the very first uh, setting here, and you have a 500 XGL robot, which is cataloged at 5 kilogram capacity. Mm -hmm. And uh, every time a robot is shipped out of the Yamaha facility, it is set to the maximum payload. So we, we already looked at your tooling, Tim, and you have approximately a 2 kilogram uh, payload on your on your robot. So we need to set that to 2 kilograms. Okay. And uh, you'll notice that uh, at 5 kilograms, you'll see some settings down below. We can see change like the X and the Y accelerate. The X and the Y velocity rate for the Scara has already been derated at, to 70%. Okay. Even though we're commanding the robot at 100% in, in the program world, it's derating it down to 70% because it's it's seeing a higher payload. So it needs to slow the robot down because it's got a lot of a mass on the end of it. Okay? Mm -hmm. So we're going to go ahead and change your, uh, your payload to 2 here. Super simple. Hit enter. You notice it turned red, so that means it hasn't accepted it yet. we got to go up and hit the Save button. And when we hit Save, you notice that, hey, at 2 kg, we get the full speed of the robot now. Oh, wow. Because one of the one of the cool things about Yamaha is 2 kg is 100% capacity of, of a Mascara robot on that. So. Okay, what's next on payload? Nothing. I see. That's it. 
Everything else is just automatically, Tim. I'm telling you. Well, that's why I keep telling you that when y'all ask that question, it's like, no, this, this really is the easy way, which kind of leads into the next easy thing, me being a PLC person, which how did y'all do it? We're actually with the OG Mr. PLC. This is Chris Elston. It's soccer rules. It's really me. I am fanning, fanboying a little bit here. <laughs> but yeah, the next advantage of this is once we enable our Ethernet IP, we can download add-on instructions from YRG Inc. And we can have this robot programmed and operating in probably an hour. So we created this playlist right here about how to enable your Ethernet IP and configure it in Studio 5000. Click here to follow us over there.